Let's talk about conditional sentences now. This is a conditional sentence here. If Ann swims, then Bob swims. And the uh, Ann swims is the embedded sentence to the left. Bob swims is the embedded sentence to the right. If then is the operator that joins these two embedded sentences into a compound. Compound we call a conditional sentence. It's called a conditional because the if part states a condition for the then part. And swimming is in some way a condition that will lead to Bob's swimming. So letting A stand for Ann swims and B stand for Bob swims and letting the symbol, the horseshoe, represent the if-then connection of the two, then we symbolize this sentence A horseshoe B and we pronounce this A horseshoe B or if A then B and this just symbolizes the if Ann swims then Bob swims sentence. The truth table that logic assigns to this sentence connective, in other words the function that we associate with this sentence connective, is going to look like this. When A and B are both true, the conditional sentence as a whole is, tr is going to be true. When A is true and B is false, the conditional sentence as a whole is false. When A is false and B is true, in that case the conditional sentence as a whole, if Ann swims then Bob swims, or any other conditional like this, uh, will be true. And when the, Ann, is, the A, Ann swims part is false and the Bob swims part is false, the sentence as a whole is still going to be assigned true. So this is a truth function because it's a functional relationship between one set of truth values and another set of truth values. It's the truth function for the horseshoe connective. And uh, Mark, do you want to come in and uh, make a comment on this table? Well, again, the, the only real key line here to really keep aware of is uh, that second one, second row. And there's only one way you can make a horseshoe false. And that's if the antecedent is true and the consequence false. I tell you what, write the following word up here. Write tough. Tough? T U F F. T U F F. F F. F. And this time, rewrite it and have that U on its side so it looks like a horseshoe. T U F F. Now, somebody once told me that it's tough to remember horseshoes. It is. If you take a look at that, if you look at the far right F, the only, only way you make a horseshoe false is if you have a true antecedent and a false consequent. That's tough to remember, maybe, but uh, I thought it was a pretty good memory device. So that's the one key way. If the, if the conditional isn't tough, it's true. If it is tough, and tough is bad, tough is false, bad, false is bad. If the conditional is false, if the, then it's going to have a true antecedent and a false consequent. That's a pretty good memory device. Might help somebody. Okay, so, so then uh, something's wrong here, but I can't figure out what it is. But anyway... Uh, so, in other words, when you have a conditional, and Mark used the word antecedent and the word consequent, uh, I didn't define those, but the antecedent is the sentence that's introduced by if and be prior to then, and the consequent is the sentence following the then. So this is the antecedent, this is the consequent of the conditional. So the only case when a conditional is false is when antecedent's true, consequence false. In every other case it's true. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that's summed up by this little tough thing. Mm -hmm. I, for some reason, I associate some being tough as bad, bad as <laughs> false. I don't know. Okay. But, yeah, it's one way of doing it. The only way you're going to make a horseshoe false is if you have a true antecedent false consequent, if you have a tough situation. All right. Very good. Thank you.